On James, addressing the media. For you per what was the offseason like for you personally? Because it had been a long time since you had missed the playoffs. And I remember hearing someone like Chris Bosh say, one of your former teammates say, when you come back this year, you will come back with a vengeance. <laughs> um, it was a great summer for me. Um, got an opportunity to um, you know, spend a lot of time with my family, my friends. Um, shot, a, shot a movie, Space Jam, that I'm uh, uh, truly excited about and, and, and will be great. Um, and also got an opportunity to put in a lot of work on my game. Uh, so, um, and take care of my body, be able to refresh my body, reset my body. Um, so it was, a, it was a great summer for me. It was long. Um, something I haven't been accustomed to over the last past uh, previous years, but um, you know, you, you take each day, and uh, I enjoyed each day that I had. LeBron, I think the longest summer since 2005, and you had been in a rhythm probably going to the finals and, and getting ready for a certain date. How does that impact your training in the offseason, and, and how do you feel physically just with that switch and how long it's been? Um, I don't think it, it impacted my training at all because I train all year round. Pretty much. Obviously, I take a little bit of time after the season from basketball just, you know, because we do so much pounding and bumping and grinding on, on, on the hardwood over there. But as far as training, I train all year round, you know. So um, in, in that instance, um, it, it didn't change much. Obviously, I ramped it up a lot more over the last couple months, um, you know, from, you know, late, you know, April, the difference between late April and, you know, August and September was obviously the training sessions and, and the regiment was a little bit different as far as ramping it up as far as intensity. But as far as me just training, I did that all summer. LeBron. Uh, we've been kind of talking about this, but you've never really quite had a summer like this, given everything that happened. Uh, where you are in your career, and as long as you were off. I mean, you had to sit and watch the playoffs and a finals. You haven't played basketball since, I think, April. Mentally, where are you? How, how did you come through this? Was it a clarifying moment? And did it refocus you? Just where, where are you in that regard? <laughs> uh, you made it sound so bad, like sitting and watching basketball is such a bad thing. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I think you guys seen some of my Instagram posts when I was actually showing you guys me watching the playoffs. I didn't miss one game, by the way throughout the whole postseason, not one. I watched every single last one of them. Even when I was on vacation, um, I watched them. Uh, from a competitor side uh, standpoint, obviously you want to be out there and I wanted to be out there with me and my teammates, um, but we didn't make it. So um, you, know, you, you take that as it is. Um, but for me, I'm just trying to refocus myself, refocus my mind and my body and uh, you know, prepare myself throughout the summer on you know, what I wanted to do and me individually, how I'm going to be a better player, a better leader this year, and uh, be as great as I can be to help this franchise do ultimately what it wants to do, and that's a, to be a better uh, franchise on the floor. We want to be able to compete every single night, and obviously we know what the long-term goal is, but it's all about the process of today. Um, I was just wondering, it was such a long process for this team to finally acquire Anthony Davis, uh, when that happened, what were you doing and how exciting was it for you that it was finally done? Um, what was I doing? I do not remember exactly what I was doing, um, but I can tell you that I was ecstatic, um, very excited. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I know the caliber of player AD is. Um, not only from a basketball standpoint, but also from a leadership standpoint and what he can bring to any franchise. And, uh, uh, you know, when Rob and everyone in the upstairs, um, you know, did what they had to do to acquire uh, a talent and a person um, uh, as AD, um, I was, I mean, obviously uh, truly excited. You guys probably seen how much time we spent together in the summertime. So um, obviously that spoke for itself, but um, it's exciting to have such a, a, a beautiful young mind um, a, a beautiful player, um, but also a great leader as well, you know, and, and um, I, don't, I don't think he gets a lot of credit for that, uh, being a leader that he is as well. So it's, it's, I think it's a great opportunity for this franchise to have such a, a you know, a, just an all-around, uh, you know, all-around person. Um, I think the basketball will speak for itself, but just an all-around great person. LeBron, um, what has been your approach to the, you, what, the way you think your team should start a season, and what will it be this year, especially in the West being so tough? I think our approach is how we approach every day. Uh, we have to try to maximize each and every day, um, and it starts with, you know, you know, tomorrow. You know, our first day uh, of practice, uh, first day of training camp, on uh, how we get better. You know, it's going to be a process for us. 
we ultimately know what, 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 what our goal wants to become, but you can't shortcut the process. And if we come in every day, uh, learn from our coaching staff, um, learn from each other, get to know one another. We have a new team. Uh, we have a few returning guys, um, but we have a lot of guys that wasn't part of the team last year. So, um, you know, chemistry and camaraderie and togetherness and, and how we can become a, a how fast we can become a team um, by not shortcutting the process is what it's going to be all about. LeBron, to your left, AD, AD told me that um, you you spoke to Lakers management and everybody about how you think it's important to kind of go through him. Uh, two questions. Have you ever done that before for another player, and why do you think um, it's important for you to do that now? Uh, yes, I have, um, actually. Um, you know, first couple years in Cleveland, when I returned for the second time, you know, I wanted to, the offense to go through Kyrie. Um, I just seen the, the, the talent, the level of talent that he had, and um, I wanted him to be able to run the show. Um, be able to put us in position, um, you know, having the, the basketball skills that Kyrie had. And, I mean, I, if you can go through back to some of my transcripts, I was talking like I believe that, you know, someday he could, you know, potentially be an MVP in our league. i just seen how talented he was. And um, so, yes, I've done that before. And um, in order for us, uh, we, we don't know exactly what our um, offensive things that we're going to do, defensively we're going to do. Uh, we haven't got started yet. Like I said, we got a brand-new coaching staff. We have brand-new players. Uh, coming into all to a new system, but we do know, we all know how great Anthony Davis is, and if we're not playing through Anthony Davis um, while he's on the floor, then um, <laughs> it makes no sense to have him on the floor because he's that great. And and it doesn't mean like every time down, you know, you know, we we throw it to him and throw it to him and throw it to him, but we have the ability to do that. And um, he's been very efficient in his career. Um, he commands double teams, and when you're able to attract two. Uh, you know, defenders on one guy, then you have the numbers game. Now you got a four on three on the backside. So it opens up for, you know, for other guys on the floor, including myself. LeBron, you, over to your right back here. You talked to a lot of people around the league this summer, and there's excitement because there's no clear cut favorite for the first time in a, in a long time. Uh, can you recall a time in your career where it felt like this going into the year? And how do you view, you know, the, the competitors, the contenders around the league? Uh, I'm not sure, Dave. I, I don't know how to kind of uh, say how I feel or how I've seen. I, I don't know. Um, you know, for me, I think it's great what, what the league uh, has been able to do year after year after year. Uh, we continue to be the, the greatest sport in the world, um, and we put out uh, the best product on the floor every night to be competitive um, and, and, and play to not only our abilities but also uh, showcase talent that our fans love, uh, play with a lot of passion. Uh, so. In that aspect, I think it's great. Um, I think our, our, our league is in a great position right now. Adam Silver has done an unbelievable job, um, and, and every team um, has tried to, um, you know, just continue to get better and better and better to help the league out um, ultimately. As far as me and as far as how I feel, you know, my only goal is how I, I can prepare myself every day to help this team be as great as we can be and, and not shortcut the process. Um, that's always been my, my goal every single year. Um, and how um, AD and myself can lead these guys um, and put them in position to be successful every night, um, not only from a game aspect, but from a practice aspect as well, uh, will ultimately be um, you know, what we want to accomplish. Uh, LeBron, uh, both the Lakers and Clippers made moves to become title contenders this summer, and uh, people here are really excited. What do you think LA is going to be like between the Lakers and Clippers? And you guys were one of the teams that were in on Kawhi. What was your reaction? Bless. What was your reaction when Kawhi and Paul George went to the Clippers? Um, well, I think it's, um, you know, it's great for, you know, everyone talking about uh, the big winners of the summertime. Um, is it the, the Nets? Is it the Clippers? Is it the Lakers? Um, it's actually Staples Center. Staples Center is the biggest winner of the summer. You know, you, if you're a fan of the game of basketball, you get an opportunity to see the Clippers one night, and then you get an opportunity to see the Lakers. Then he's got great shows and great performers and artists and everybody who come through Staples Center all throughout the year. Uh, Staples Center is a, is a place to be. Um, maybe even Sierra Canyon can go there and play a game. Just throwing that out there. They have some some freshman on their team that's doing okay for himself as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, um, I think it's just great. I mean, the, the city of Los Angeles should be very proud of what's going on, not only with the Lakers and the Clippers, but also with the Rams and the Dodgers and the Kings and, and USC and UCLA and so on and so on. If I missed you, um, um, you know, I apologize. But it's just it's a great time 
uh, to be a sports fan in the city. LeBron, do you take here? Do you take any right here? Sorry, we, oh, okay. do you take any extra motivation after all that the team went through last year? And do you still feel like you have something to prove or show to the LA Laker fans? Um, I'm very motivated, um, but I, I'm right now not in talking about it mode. I've been very quiet this summer for a reason, and uh, my mother always told me, uh, "Don't talk about it, be about it." Man, so that's where I'm at. Um, I think as a team um, and myself, um, we need to get the Lakers back to uh, what they've been accustomed to over years. So I'm excited about that. Le LeBron, you talk about the relationship with, with, with AD, and it seems like it's a pretty, there's a pretty deep bond there. But it, you know he's a free agent at the end of this year. Does, does that pending decision, um, has that influenced the way you are thinking about that relationship and going into this season to make sure that he wants to stay here long term? No, of course not. Um, for me, um, if you know me, um, there's a couple people that know me. I, I'm a guy who lives right now. I live in the present. And, uh, you know, what's happened in the past, there's nothing you can do about that. And you can't, you have no idea what the future holds. You know, so, you know, if you start to think about the future, um, then you will miss out on a great opportunity that might be right, right in front of your face. And, um, and I think that's even more selfish. So for me, um, having AD here right now and having this ball club here, we're, we're not even going to address that throughout the season. I bet um, AD will, will talk about it. Um, but our, our goal is to get better every day. Um, you know, Coach Vogel and the coaching staff is going to put us in the you know, best possible chance for us to win every night. And, and that's what it's all about. Hi, LeBron. Yeah. Are you planning on play for the Team USA next season, Sorry. next next year? Are you, are you planning on play for the Team USA oh, next the team year? Team USA? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would love to. Um, you know, I have to. I would like to. I want to stay healthy as well. That's most important. Um, you know, I was not, um, um, not happy about you know how we did this summer. Um, I think we're all a brotherhood, and I know the guys that was there, they played, um, you know, extremely hard. They played extremely well together. Um, they just fell a little bit shorter than we, what our uh, expectations are, and, and I applaud those guys. I didn't say anything, obviously, while they were, while they were playing, but I applaud every, every one uh, individual that was on that team this summer, including the coaching staff and everybody, but um, it's not what we are accustomed to. Um, so, um, you know, see how I can do it throughout this season, and um, – you know, and I will, um, you know, address that at some point. Um, you know, hopefully have an op opportunity to have a conversation with Coach Pop and see what his direction is, um, you know, going forward with, with, with Team USA. But I will always uh, uh, bleed red, white, and blue, that's for sure. LeBron, to your right. Um, Rob has talked about a lot how he conferenced with you and AD while the roster was being built. What was that process like, and how has that, has, has that affected your relationship or – Closing your relationship with Rob? Um, I think uh, it's not about what, you know, first of all, I think, you know, Rob and, and Kurt and, and Linda and Jeannie and everybody in the upstairs did a hell of a job this summer. Um, you know, from acquiring AD, um, you know, to, to acquiring everyone um, that is a part of this team, to bringing back the guys that were free agents last year, bringing them back to the roster. Um, they did a hell of a job. And, and um, you know, bringing in the coaching staff, handpicking the coaching staff as they did. Um, so, you know, throughout all the, um, throughout all the, the word that I want to use is not for, the, throughout all the bull that was narrated for our franchise um, and, and narrated and, and, and going towards Rob and, and, and the beautiful people that we have upstairs, um, they just kept their, their blinders on and, and and just focus on what they had to do to, to help this franchise be as competitive as they can be. Um, and they did exactly that and, he, and, and also even exceeded that. So, so, you know, I think they did a hell of a job and, and I'm happy to be a Laker. Appreciate it. So much to